Hi everyone, welcome to this video on essay writing. In this video, we will discuss some tips on how to write a digital essay. So what kinds of things to focus on, what to avoid, how to structure your work, and so on. This video is part of the Digital Hermeneutics course at UC Berkeley. What is an essay? Well, the most important thing to remember is that the academic essay you'll be writing shouldn't just be a matter of personal opinion. The objective is to write something that does make use of your own perspective and experience, but that isn't simply stating an opinion. It should be something that builds on research theory, something that is not just a subjective matter, but an intersubjective one. One that uses logic, evidence and rhetoric to offer a convincing argument. Writing an academic essay means fashioning a coherent set of ideas into such an argument. Because essays are essentially linear, that is, they offer one idea at a time, they have to present their ideas in the order that makes most sense to a reader. Successfully structuring an essay means attending to an imagined reader's logic. Finally, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to essay writing. The focus of an essay determines its structure. It dictates the information readers need to know and the order in which they need to receive it. This means your essay structure is necessarily unique to the main claim you're making. There is no set formula. Next, what is a digital essay? Well, the great thing about a digital essay is that I won't have to print it when reading it. This gives you a lot of options you wouldn't have otherwise. First, especially if you're working in Python, make sure to include and explain the visualizations that you think are most helpful to your argument. Now, you could do that in a paper essay, but keep in mind that since this is a digital essay, you can link to videos or audio files as well. Again, if it helps your argument. This means, for instance, that you could use animated visualizations as well. You can also link to videos or other online materials that you think are valuable. Finally, and because of these options, digital essays allow for more freedom in terms of narration and composition. Be creative. Try to think about the kind of structure that would be most helpful to the point that you're trying to make. Don't wait with writing. Most people think the following. I need to have an idea which I ponder for the first 20 days, then I do all this marvelous research the next month, and then I write my paper in the last week. Well, that's a recipe for a nervous breakdown. A better idea is to think of an idea and immediately start writing to refine that idea and to force yourself to investigate it and to do research. Why is that? Well, for one, it clarifies that which you don't understand yet. It also makes it easier to engage in dialogue and deal with the criticism of others. But most importantly, you think more clearly when you're writing. Now, if you're looking to get a good grade for your essay, it's important to realize that a lot already happens before your teacher has even started reading. When I open an essay and it looks like this, it sort of makes it a daunting task to start reading, right? Why is that? Well, mainly it's because it's missing subheadings. If you only have 3,000 words to convince your reader, you've got to keep their attention. Now, these lengthy kinds of digressions without subheadings can be okay in certain cases. They're certainly okay in academic articles and in longer essays, but you might want to keep the reader's attention. So don't forget to insert some headings that indicate what the next paragraph is going to be about. Disregarding the line distance and font for a second, which one of these examples works better? First tip, if you want to convince your teachers that you've been considerate in writing your essay, 
is page layout. If you make sure your paragraphs are all more or less the same length, essays immediately look better. Short paragraphs are usually an indicator that you haven't thought through your argument very well. Personal language in an essay. Yes, you can use the personal I in an essay. But typically, you don't want to refer to what you think. Instead, you want to refer to what your evidence suggests. But by all means, make use of the personal I and make use of the active voice. In fact, try to avoid the kind of passive writing that you see in most academic articles. It's kind of boring and it doesn't really help with getting your point across. Finally, is it okay to be controversial? Well, what you're offering is a well-supported argument. If you don't support your arguments well, your essay becomes simply a matter of opinion. The problem with the personal I is that it can be an easy escape into opinion. I think Hamlet was just stupid. If you do this before you have grappled with the discipline of assessing a work on its own merits and on external sources, it can be kind of a crutch. But even if you don't want to use the personal I, at least think the I while you write. Or write the first draft in the first person and then take the eyes out. It will warm up your impersonal style. Plan it out. Don't get sidetracked by all kinds of minor details you're interested in. I know this is difficult, especially if it's a topic that you're fascinated by. Keep your eyes on the prize. The prize being your audience following you. Each paragraph you write must be, somehow, relevant to your main question or your main thesis. The brilliant idea. Everyone feels this one, right? Everyone's got these brilliant ideas, but mine are trivial. Well, good writers start anyway. Nine times out of ten, what you think is trivial actually turns out to be quite interesting. And moreover, because you're offering your personal take on it, your unique scholarly, academic, and personal experience, you will offer a perspective that no one else is capable of offering. The first draft. How do you write it? Well, generally it's a good idea to pretend that you're explaining something to a co-student. Here's the problem that I'm writing about. It's an interesting problem and I'll tell you why. The thing is, this problem hasn't really been solved yet. Here's my idea for solving it. These are the details of that idea. And this is how my idea relates to the ideas of other people. If you figure these things out, this little checklist will help you clarify for yourself what should be in this first draft, what should be the main point of your essay. Quotations. People often ask, can I use them? Is it okay? Yes, don't forget about them. A well-placed quotation by someone who's relevant to the point you're making can add a lot to the points in your essay. Quotations in general should be brief and they should always add to your point, not the other way around. One thing that many writers do is put all kinds of citations of other people in their papers and then they don't explain why they picked these sentences precisely. If you cite, then cite someone who said something better than you could say it yourself. Structurally, unless you're using a quotation to end a paragraph or something, it's best to establish who said what where, use the quote, and then explain why the quote is so important. It usually works to focus on one small part of the quote when you're explaining it, like a word or a concept, something that's introduced and that you find very important to your case. The research question. So 
usually the research question. Right. A lot of essays will begin with some kind of research question. Others begin with a topic statement or a main point you're trying to make. In any case, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind and to check up on to see whether you're heading in the right direction when you're developing an idea. The first one is about feasibility. So is it actually realistic that you can pull this off, this idea that you have? So is it actually realistic that you can pull this idea that you have off? A few things to take into account here are if you're tackling the right amount of subjects in the question, that is not too many, and that you actually have the experience to make it work, especially when you're doing research as a job. Next, the question if it's interesting. Right, you can do research into some Reddit community or something, but it's probably only interesting if you can ask certain questions of it. This is why we are actually looking at subreddits. A lot of them contain controversial ideas or discussions about social reality. And you would do well to pick one that is actually interesting to you and that you think is fascinating in the way in which it constructs an idea about reality. Third, it should be novel. I sometimes see essays from students who don't really know what to write about, so they take a question from research that they've read in class. Now, of course, this is a huge problem because I can't create it based on their own ideas, on their own logic and argument. It's basically plagiarism, which is an absolute no-go and will probably result in you flunking a course. There are great plagiarism checkers these days, so what you want to do is start from these other academic sources you've read, but think about whether you want to confirm what they're saying, refute it, disagreeing with it, or extending it to encompass something you happen to know a lot about. So try to be novel. Try to create something new. Finally, relevance. This is related to most of the other aspects here, sort of the culmination of them. Ask yourself the question, why would we want to know this sort of thing? If you're going to go through great pains to figure out how many people in the Harry Potter books use the word my, that could be interesting, but only if you frame it in the right way. In other words, not all forms of analysis are relevant and valuable to the research community. So the thing to keep in mind is irrelevant questions tend to lead to irrelevant essays. If someone's grading your paper, or your thesis for that matter, they will look if what you bring to the table is actually relevant for other people in the field. If you come up with a super wobbly argument that doesn't really convince anyone or that tackles a subject no one's really interested in, your research will probably not be read by many people. Finally, the introduction and conclusion, the beginning and the end of your essay. If you visualize it, the introduction looks a bit like this, an upside down triangle. So you begin broadly, or with an anecdote, something to reel in the reader, and then gradually you become more specific until you finally end with a very focused and precise statement of your research question or thesis statement. A good conclusion has the opposite structure of a good introduction. It's like an upright triangle. So it begins with, again, a very focused paraphrase of your thesis statement, or an answer to your question, the thing that you've just described in great detail, right? And then it broadens its scope to show the significance of that argument in a larger context. I hope these tips have given you some insight into how to write a digital essay for this course. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.